السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو لیکچر سکس آف ایس پی ایل ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈو اسٹیک ہولڈر اینالیسس اینڈ سوشل ریسپانسبلٹی سو اٹس مور لائک وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی اسٹیک ہولڈرس اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹڈی اے ماڈل انڈر دس ٹاپک سو دس آر دا ایریاز دیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو فوکس ان دس لیکچر internal corporate governance stakeholders the internal stakeholders the external stakeholders csr that is your corporate social responsibility stakeholders and their claims how do you classify stakeholders and how do you manage stakeholder uh, conflicts what is the impact of the stakeholders on corporate governance how stakeholders impact on corporate governance and the organization as a corporate citizen now before i start with this topic let me tell you very important that this topic from the exam point of view is the most important topic you will never see a question where stakeholders are not asked you will never see a question so that shows that this topic is very very important you will definitely be asked a question on stakeholders okay that's why this topic is very important so let's start with internal stakeholders now stakeholders could be internal which are inside your organization or external okay but before going to internal and external what stakeholders if i ask you this definition definition is not so important the reason i give you definition is for you to ha have a better understanding okay so don't uh, try to memorize or don't try so hard to memorize all the definitions of everything all the terms and all it's not so important but understand the stakeholders are someone it could be a person or group of person or any company that can affect or they can be affected by the organization is a two way relationship remember either they will affect the organization in a positive or a negative okay or they get affected by the activities of the organization okay that is a stakeholder there are many stakeholders so now we are going to internal stakeholders the one who are inside the organization okay the ones who are inside the organization they have a operational role okay they are they are they are with the operations of the company and they also have a role in corporate governance remember whether internal or external any stakeholder they have a role in corporate governance okay and they also have interest number of interest or you can say stakeholders claim we are going to study this a little bit uh, later in detail what is the stakeholder claims and all <laughs> okay so i think now let us go to the some uh, examples of stakeholders that are internal okay i can quickly go through this this will not take me 2 minutes or not even 5 minutes because this is something which is uh, you have studied this in your earlier studies and it's not something very hard number 1 directors directors are the employees of the organization right they are internal stakeholder they are inside the organization they are very important what are their what are their operational role they are responsible for the actions of the corporation they usually direct they usually carry out the activities or they have a direction for the organization okay they are the ones who direct that this is the way you have to go this is the way your strategy has to be followed okay so they are responsible for it and they are role in the corporate governance is what is it they are the agent remember so they are uh, they are there for the shareholders right they are hired by shareholders but when it comes to corporate governance role they have to take care of all the stakeholders okay so control company in the best interest of stakeholders not just shareholders stakeholders they have to take care of all the stakeholders okay and what are their main interest in the company p obviously they will be considered uh, what is their salary benefits that they are receiving and all everything comes under p so they will be worried about it what are their performance linked bonuses the bonuses that are linked to their performance what are the share options that they are entitled what is their status okay reputation power now coming to the second type of stakeholder that is company secretary this is also internal inside the organization that works operational role they comply with all the rules and regulations it could be any rules okay it could be tax or accounting rules audit so they take care of it they see whether the company is complying with such rules and regulations or not and remember company secretary is not someone 
uh, whom you are assuming that they are carrying a brief, uh, briefcase and then they are uh, they, they just uh, make the schedule for the uh, the owners it's not like that anymore you need to be highly qualified to be a company secretary company secretary is the one who has the additional task he or she has the most exhausting work i would say right because they have to know everything about the organization they are the eye for the owner of the organization for the shareholders so they they make sure that they are, they are complying with the rules and regulations or not okay and if there is any uh, whether legal responsibilities that a company needs to comply they keep the board informed that means they have to know all the rules and regulations you have to have a financial literacy to be a company secretary okay next advise the board you are someone who who, who is in advisory position you can advise on corporate governance matter when it comes to corporate governance and it has the same interest as the director okay pay bonus options reputation and all those things next third is sub board management this is below the director the middle level management you can see what is the operational they run okay the directors are the one who is planning and they're te they're telling the middle manager they're delegating it to the middle manager middle manager is the one who's actually doing it doing the work they're running the operation okay they implement those uh, board policies when it comes to governance role they identify and evaluate risks that are faced by the company then they enforce the control then they monitor the success and they report reporting thing everything identification enforcing everything is done by the support management okay and their main interest is again pay it has similar okay most of the time inside stakeholders they have similar interest pay bonus job stability okay career progression obviously they want to progress higher and be a ceo or a director status working conditions coming to employees okay employees is below the sub board management so they carry out whatever the orders are there by the management and in corporate governance they comply with internal controls and they report if there are any breaches and all they have the similar interest as the sub board management so usually you can say whether it's director whether it is sub board management whether it is employee or company secretary they have similar interest in the company pay working condition and all of those things obviously stakeholders uh, sorry yes, the company secretary and director will not be so much focused about job stability and working conditions because uh, it's there it's already there they have excellent working condition and job stability is also there it's not easy to hire and fire directors and company secretary by the way the way you hire and fire the lower level employees okay so that's why their job is more stable and working conditions is good for them come and compared to other like compared to employees or sub board management they, you can easily replace them so that's why they are worried about their how stable their job is or their working conditions coming to career progression in terms of directors and company secretary there is not much of a career progression that they have to worry because they are already at their peak you can say but when it comes to employee they will be worried about this career progression right so some additional is there for the employees and the managers trade unions could be another internal stakeholders not every company has trade unions but it, if it has then it's an internal stakeholder okay and in the exam also trade unions do come in the case study so you have to be aware their operational role is to protect employee interest they work for the welfare of the employee coming to the governance role if there is any breaches in governance they highlight it okay and their main interest is power and status these are the two in, uh, main interest of the trade union so this were the internal stakeholders now we are moving on to the external stakeholders it's easy outside the organization okay here also they have a role okay they have a, they, they can influence the operation of the company okay but they have their own interests and claims like how internal stakeholders have they also have their own claims and what is stakeholder claim it is something that stakeholder wants from the organization okay it could be anything and they are 
two types of claim one is known as direct claim the other one is known as indirect claim direct claim means you can directly claim you are known you are someone very important to the organization you are directly known by you are known to the organization okay one example is trade unions they have direct claim they can directly claim okay another one is indirect claim what is it in that that stakeholder does not have so much of power maybe okay to raise his opinion or raise his voice you can say voiceless they are voiceless even if they make a claim is not heard or they are not known they are not recognized by the organization one example is let's say a, a very big company okay a large retail organization okay uh, and in that large retail organization one one customer just one customer is having some issue so can that one individual customer make a claim directly against the large retail organization is just one individual a very small customer not a big major customer no impact is very less so that's indirect claim okay they might not even recognize that customer because for them every customer is same or let's say the environment the species the animal species can they make a claim for the organization for the pollution and all that uh, that they are suffering that the fishes are dying in the sea the animals are dying in the forest because of this pollution and oil spilling of oil can they make any voice do they have no it's indirect claim even though they do have a claim against the organization but it's indirect okay let's come to the stakeholders auditors right auditors is external their main role is to give a report give their opinion on the company's financial position okay now why we are not talking from the point of corporate governance now because when we are talking about external stakeholders external stakeholders does not, does not have so much of impact on corporate governance like how in, uh, internal stakeholders do right so we can directly just tell about their main role and shift to their interest or claim in the companies one is fees audit fee their reputation their quality of relationship with the company and how they are complying with the audit requirements next set of stakeholders regulators the one who puts the regulation they implement and they monitor also so their interest is whether the company is complying with those regulations and the, how effective the regulations are this term then we have small investors okay small investors they have limited power not so power, so much power but limited power to vote and their interest is maximization of shareholder value any investor is just maximization of shareholder value only then we have government what is their main role it's very easy government is that the company is maintaining laws and their interest is whether they are complying with laws whether they are paying the tax correctly at the proper time level of employment okay and level of import and export these are controlled by the government remember if there is an area where unemployment is very high they might give incentives subsidies to those area so that employment is increased right things like that stock exchange again they implement and they see whether rules and regulations are maintained by the companies that are listed on the stock exchange or not and their interest is again whether you are complying with rules and regulations fees and last but not the least trade unions okay trade unions can come internal as well as external stakeholders okay because trade unions earlier we studied here wait oh uh, just here see employee representative trade unions we studied under internal stakeholders also now we are going to study under external stakeholders also so their primary interest is pay and working conditions of the member that is we know their interest is concerned by poor corporate governance okay if they are not, if they are directly not uh, in the organization okay if they are just concerned about poor corporate governance and all then they can be considered as external stakeholders okay but in order for you to not uh, be confused whether it's internal or external you can just uh, take out the trade unions out and 
if you have to give examples of external stakeholders, you can go through the other stakeholders. That is government. Those things are easy. Auditor, government, customer, supplier, and those things. Okay. So concerned by poor corporate governance. Okay. And poor management of health and safety risk. That is their interest. And industrial relations, strikes and all. Institutional investors. Oh, there is one more I forgot. Okay. Institutional investors. This is very important. We are going to study in depth about institutional investors. It's very important type of stakeholders. Okay. They are major stakeholders. Okay. They are very wealthy, wealthy stakeholders. So they can they they can influence a policy, corporate policy. Interest, value of shares and dividend payment, security of funds that is invested. Timeless of information. See, they have they are investing in many organizations, many companies they invest. Okay, institutional investors are very huge. They are very wealthy. These are not tiny uh, investors. So the information that they receive about a company needs to be on time. Okay, so timeliness of information is very important for this type of investors. Institutional shareholder rights are observed. Yes. Now we are going to study in depth what is the relationship between institutional investors and corporate governance. Remember, everything we study, the main theme is corporate governance only. How everything is linked to the corporate governance. Bring everything back to the corporate governance because our main idea is section B is corporate governance. Okay, that's why we are studying stakeholders. See, institutional investors, they can bring a pressure. Okay. Okay, institution investor is the one who is pressurized to give more attention to the corporate governance issue. Compared to other stakeholders, whether it is customer, supplier, government, it is the institutional investors that are pressurized the most when it comes to corporate governance issue. Why? Number one, due to their size, because the size of their shareholding is so huge that they can have a very big impact. They can exert significant influence on any policy. Okay. They can even bring some of the underperforming companies and make them perform good. They can turn a failure company to a successful company. They have the resources. So that's why their influence is very significant. Then these are some main kind of institutional investors, okay? Who has who are very big. One is pension fund. The one who is taking care of pension fund is very big. Complicated also. This, it's not easy. It's very complicated. This type of uh, areas. Ins insurance company. Then we have mutual funds, sovereign funds. So these are four types of institutional investors. Okay. Now, stakeholder conflict. Conflict is very easy when one group is in conflict with another one. Okay. So when we are having so many stakeholders, it's very easy that one stakeholder might not be okay with another stakeholder, their opinion. So there's a conflict of interest among the two groups okay and it's not easy for the business to make a choice in that case which stakeholder to support okay one example is the cheapest supplier good let's say okay if you are if you are taking a cheapest supplier for your goods the one who is giving you the goods supplying you the goods you go by the cheaper supplier okay it's true that prices will go down for the customer. Customers will be happy. Correct? One stakeholder is happy customer. Who? Customer because prices are going down for them. But on the other end, what is it? It is at the expense of ethical practice that are practiced by whom the suppliers. Maybe your product might not be safe. Maybe you are compromising on the quality of your product in order to bring the prices down. So you are uh, keeping your customers happy at the expense of your quality of your product maybe in the short run okay you will anyhow go make a profit and but in the long run it will have an impact on your reputation okay it can lead it can damage your reputation as well as financial loss because cheaper products usually comes with see when you are gaining somewhere you are losing somewhere Okay, that gain is coming at the expense of somewhere. You're cutting the corner somewhere. So cheap product means maybe you are having an unethical supplier. 
who is using child labor who is using materials that might not be of uh, good quality so this can have a uh, this can be very risky for the customer also sometimes when they use the product especially things like food right things like that now so overall this is like a map make sure that you keep this in your mind because at the end of the video i'm going to again go through this map whatever we have covered so this is just an intro of what are we going to cover in this lecture okay we are going to start with the definition and nature of csr that is corporate social responsibility okay and under that we are going to study the carol carol is a person who have told that there are four viewpoints or four responsibilities that a stakeholder uh, that an organization takes okay we will go through those four so corporate social responsibility again under this three branches are there we are going to cover stakeholder theory okay we have already covered this theory in fact in my previous lecture but this is the it's broken down into more parts right we didn't cover all the parts there in that lecture corporate citizenship we are going to cover what is it and shareholder ownership okay then the definition and stakeholders so under stakeholder theory what is what is it the definition and then again the stakeholders are divided into four parts here we are going to cover stakeholders classification how do you classify stakeholders then how do you manage stakeholders then how do you motivate stakeholders how stakeholders are motivated for the actions that they do and impact of the stakeholders on corporate governance that's the main thing at the end everything concludes to what is their impact on the corporate governance but for that we have to study in detail about stakeholders how do you manage stakeholder conflict how do you classify stakeholders how do you motivate stakeholders how do they take their decisions based on what criteria these things we are going to cover and we are going to go through a model also mandelos matrix or Ma uh, mandelos model you can see again very important okay it, it is most of the time asked in the exam so you need to go through it now coming to the first csr what is csr corporate social responsibility basically it is about how organization manage their impact on the variety of stakeholders not just one not just two not just the shareholder but many okay for example your employees your shareholder supplier customer local community and environment now remember csr is a very broad concept it's not limited to one or two it's very broad concept that's why it's very easy for people to misinterpret because there is no exact definition or not just one definition of csr okay but it's a broad concept and it addresses many topics under that we have things like human rights also sometimes it's linked with csr okay human rights or corporate governance health and safety environmental effect working conditions and contribution to economic development any of this okay but whatever the definition is remember one thing is for sure the purpose of csr is what it is driving you towards sustainability for you to be sustainable that means they think about long term not short term profit everything is to be sustainable that is the main idea of csr okay now we are going to study the carol carol's model okay or you can say enlightened self interest what does it mean it means when an entity takes a decision organization takes a decision okay it is based on four okay number one so this goes in a this goes in this order okay it follows an order number one for economic purpose or you can say economic responsibility where you are being ethical or you are taking care of the society or taking care of your stakeholders only because it will give you some extra profit so your main motive is for profit you are you are taking care of your society or stakeholders okay because if you are ethical or in short you can say you are ethical because it will give you some extra profit that is the word is economic okay that means you are being economical you are taking economic responsibility that is level 1 the lowest level okay the as you go higher up the level you are more towards csr okay corporate social responsibility so economic is the lowest is the bottom level above that comes legal 
legal means now you are being ethical because if you are not being ethical you will be boycotted by the law maybe so you know so you are just complying with the law that's it uh, beyond and above that you are not doing anything you are just being ethical only up to the point where you are legal where it's legal where you have to comply with the law that's it so your main aim is legal that is above economic just beyond profit third is ethical where because you feel that if you are ethical your employees will want to work with you nowadays most of the employees they are attracted towards those organizations who are socially responsible companies so for that reason you are ethical this is your ethical right the fourth stage that is the highest stage okay you are where you yourself you don't have any obligations to comply with uh, or you don't have any motive to make a profit no obligation for the law uh, not just not just because you think it's right or others perceive you to be right because you want to beyond and above your needs your obligations your responsibility voluntarily you are doing something for the environment for the organization socially okay philanthropic that is the highest level that is next to csr close to csr you can say okay where you are making some positive contribution to the society for the long term because you feel if you make some uh, cause positive contribution it will lead to more safe more better educated and more equitable community for you to also work for you also to do a business with them right that means you'll be more stable in the long run maybe not in the short run you will obviously you will have some cost but in the long run yes you are going to get the benefit you are going to enjoy the fruits of it philanthropic so these are the four levels economic above that legal above that ethical and then final stage philanthropic this is the carol's model you can see okay next now earlier we talked about that there are two claims one could be direct one could be indirect okay direct we know directly you can make okay directly it is made from the stakeholders to the organizations one example for the direct claim it is trade unions they can raise their voices that they are not being uh, treated fairly or they are not being paid fairly employees the shareholders the customers or the supplier they can directly indirect means for example the natural environment they have no voice if they are being polluted they have no voice okay or producer for your product but in, in a far away distant country it's very hard right it's very remote for the, from the organization so indirect claim they have now we are coming to the classification of stakeholder how do you classify you classify stakeholders uh, in six ways this is very important number 1 internal and external we have already went through that in the beginning of the lecture we started with internal and external stakeholders what are they okay so i'm not going to cover this again second narrow and wide stakeholders this we are going to cover primary secondary active passive voluntary involuntary legitimate and illegitimate these are the six ways internal external i have already covered now let us move on from point number 2 onwards so narrow and wide what does it mean narrow means we all know narrow right wide means big enough but what how do you define this is the extent to which the stakeholder group is affected by organization activity that means how much you are affected are you affected too much or are you affected very less that is the meaning of narrow wide so narrow means you are most affected and wide means you are less affected okay who are the stakeholders in the narrow that is your shareholder because shareholders will be very affected employees will be very affected management very affected customer supply very affected but when it comes to wide this are stakeholders who are not so affected they are not okay and they are less dependent also one example is government government will be less affected obviously both will be affected but less affected impact is less extent is less wide community or non dependent customer customers who are not so dependent on your organization they are known as wide okay remember this classification this is very important and especially it will help you in the exam because in the exam you might sometimes have to classify sometimes you have to identify what type of stakeholder which category it comes under okay primary secondary is the third primary secondary means 
here is the other way around see wide narrow means organization will have an impact on you primary secondary means how you can affect the organization it's the other way around now okay so from wide and narrow think the other way around opposite now earlier you were getting affected by organization now you are affecting the organization how much can you affect primary if it's a primary you will have a direct effect on the company if it's secondary obviously limited effect not so direct effect primary means whom without whom is very difficult for the companies to operate that means companies very much dependent on you those stakeholders who are they one example is government you need the support of government you need the license from the government to operate without it's, it's hard they will have direct effect secondary for example manager or community why see manager you might be asking me why manager is not important see i understand manager is the one who runs the company but you can replace manager no if this manager is not working you replace the second one you are not dependent on one single manager same for community so they do not have direct influence but government yes so they are primary this is secondary active passive active passive means what who wants to take part in the activity or who does not want to take part in the activity of the organization that is the meaning of active passive active means you are very active you want to take participate passive means you do not want to participate okay so active is that active stakeholders are manager okay because they have to participate managers employees regulators they have to regulate environmental pressure groups they are very active and supplier passive means they do not wish to participate shareholders do they participate no yes they might have a power and they have invested okay they might want to know the returns and all but they do not participate on day to day basis okay local community no also not government and customer also not customer does not uh, participate in the decision making of the organization okay so they are passive voluntary involuntary okay so voluntary involuntary means voluntary you choose to be involved in organization decision making see this is something you can choose you can have a say if you don't want don't do if you want do that is the meaning of voluntary we all know right example is manager employee environmental groups and all and they can easily withdraw also in the short term in the short term okay how for example employee they have they have a decision they can decide for themselves whether i want to work for this organization or not if they don't want they can simply just withdraw okay they might resign so it's voluntary they are known as voluntary because they have a decision they have a choice they can make a choice same for environmental groups same for manager but involuntary means those stakeholders that they do not have a choice but they are involved in organization decision they will be involved no matter what but they do not have a choice they are not willingly getting involved they are unwillingly getting involved in the organization decisions okay it could be for many reasons for example regulators any organization is open regulators will be there they will be involved every organization has some rules and regulations so regulators automatically will come into the picture they cannot withdraw okay involuntary you cannot withdraw in the short to medium term maybe in the long run yes but not in the short to medium term key customer customers who are key supplier the government they automatically with the organization they will get involved you need a supply for organization to survive you need governments natural environment also will be there local communities this they cannot okay one example okay voluntary involuntary you have to give from your body parts voluntary is your hands you can have a choice how you want to move the hand whether you want to move your hand or not or you just want to stay safe. your heart your heart beat it's involuntary it beats on its own it will keep beating you don't have to do any activity so involuntary stakeholders also like that with the organization they will come together like a package you cannot uh, withdraw them in the long run yes but not in the short to medium term legitimate illegitimate legitimate means they have a valid claim illegitimate means they might have invalid claim okay 
but this is very subjective remember legitimate or illegitimate is something which you can decide whether you want to consider a particular stakeholder as illegitimate or not that is something very subjective it's hard <coughs> but the organization recognizes the stakeholder or stakeholder groups or not that is up to you that is up to the organization okay for example customer supply very legitimate if you are giving a quality product customer suffering they will have a claim against you same for supplier they might return illegitimate for example terrorist they do not have any link with you okay so you don't have to take their views into the considerations when you are making any decision they are illegitimate okay now coming to the model so from our classification we are moving towards how do you manage the uh, the stakeholder relations for that we are going to go through a model very well known mandlos model or mandlos matrix you can say because it's on two axes x axis and y axis that's why <coughs> on the x axis we have interest sorry x axis and y axis we have power power means how much influence you have over an organization what is your power whether high or low so for interest also we have, we have high low for power also we have high low okay now there are four types of stakeholders that come that will fit in this model based on the power and interest okay first i will go diagonal di diagonally right diagonal low low high high because that's the easiest way for you to learn if you're studying any model wherever this axis is given high high low low always go diag uh, diagonal it's easy to understand and memorize it also that way otherwise it's easy to get confused that's how i studied so start with low low high high if both power and interest is low it's very easy it is not so important you don't have to worry so much about that group of stakeholders because they don't have high power interest is also low their power is also low so neither they can influence neither they will get affected by any activities of the organization minimal effect the effort that you have to uh, put for this group of stakeholders is very minimum okay examples small shareholders or general public okay next is high high both power interest is high that means it's very important they are your key players you have to keep an eye on this directors example is director major shareholder and your trade unions next where your power is high power is high but interest is low that is keep them satisfied you have to keep them satisfied because they have a high power even though currently they are not having so much of interest but maybe they might uh, have interest later on so power is now high so sometimes it's possible that the high power low interest might become into key players okay it's possible so for example garment they have high power to have an to influence the organization's activity but they are not so much interested interested in a sense of interested in making any decision or decision making process they do not do that government so they are less satisfied they are low interest they have but power is high so you have to keep them satisfied and also institutional shareholders on the other end we have power is less but interest is very high okay keep them informed this other stakeholders staff staff they do not have so much of power to influence the decision but they have an interest they want to they want to know what's happening customer supplier environmental pressure group all of them power is less interest is high but you have to keep them informed because if you don't keep them informed they might gain the power with the one the with the stakeholders who are having the high power and they might become into this category they might go to high power and high interest they might even become key players also okay so this is it now some examples of stakeholder conflicts okay one example where you are closing your workplace so when you are closing it, it the effect will be for the employees because they are going to get affected they are going to lose their jobs no salary for them okay so this decision it will be okay for the shareholder why because maybe shareholder feels that they are not getting enough profit so let's close down okay 
and also for the providers of finance the ones who are giving you loans and all but for your employees and trade unions it's not a good thing they will oppose to this decision so it's a conflict among between the employees and the shareholder next set of conflict could be where you want to increase the selling margin to gain profit here also the conflict is among the customer and the shareholder for customer it will not be good why because for them prices will be higher than if you increase the selling price but for the shareholder for you it's okay because your profit margin will increase then third where you want to automate your work automation is good because it will reduce the cost and improve productivity it's good for the company good for the manager good for the customer also because they will get good productive uh, goods good for the shareholder also but employees will get affected again because if automation is there employees will be laid off so they'll be unemployed then addition of extra shifts you are giving extra shifts to improve the factory productivity this will be supported by manager also customer also supplier but not by the local community and the environmental pressure group because this will affect their quality of life work life balance will not be there and also it will have an impact on the environment also pollution and all will be caused right if you are working too much on the factory that's why local community and environmental pressure groups <coughs> come into the picture right oppose but in the exam we don't know which out of this might come maybe it will be some other type of stakeholder conflict which might not be there in the list but this is just for understanding this four examples as i've given so this is not just it not only four there can be many types of stakeholder conflict okay stakeholder conflict basically means where you want to do something another party is against it maybe it might it might not be good for them so that is stakeholder conflict so it's easy to identify how do you assess which stakeholder is important you have customer you have supplier you have shareholder to what how how do you assess see immediate thought is what immediately if i ask you anyone normally if i ask you who is your important stakeholder people will say customer okay obviously because cust customer is the one through which you are getting the profit shareholder because he's investing it and also employees because they work so this three categories are important customer shareholder employee okay but still still you have to continually assess in that map mendelos map which stakeholder is having a high power high interest who is going where why you have to keep an eye on them because some stakeholders might require immediate action if you don't take immediate action it will lead to conflict of interest and then ultimately you will not you will fail to manage your stakeholder maybe they might be your key stakeholders who have you have, who you have failed to manage and then things happen right strikes or customer might boycott your product things like that and then it will affect your reputation and everything as follows on so there are three attributes which are very important when you want to see how important your stakeholder is number one is power number two is legitimacy whether they have the power to affect number two legitimate whether you consider that your stakeholders actions are legitimate or not third is urgency how urgent it is is it very immediate immediate that you have to uh, handle them if these three things are there if they have high power legitimacy is also yes urgency is very urgent then it is called as definitive stakeholders if all the three qualities are there okay so this three means it requires immediate action that means they are very important you have to immediately need to take an action other than this three if this three things are not there then those stakeholders are called as latent stakeholders you can delay okay to satisfy them or to keep them you can delay in those things this is again very important okay then we are moving to motivation from managing stakeholders to classification now we are how you motivate okay so here also there are two okay two motivations why organizations act in relation to the stakeholders number one one is known as instrumental view the other one is known as normative view what is the meaning of instrumental view that means you are taking stakeholders as instrument okay instrumental view means you react to the stakeholder or you take stakeholders uh, concern into the consideration because you believe 
okay that if you do not do that it will have an impact on your primary objective primary objective could be profit or if it's a charity it could be other than, uh, uh, other than profit it could be anything but most is profit that's what we say so it can affect your profit so that's the bottom line motivation is what profit because it will affect your profit that's why you're taking care of stakeholder not because you really are concerned or you really want to take care no profit that is known as instrumental that means <coughs> the stakeholder that you are taking care of that's a stakeholder uh, concern your concern for the stakeholder is because you are using those as an instrument the stakeholder you are using it as an instrument for the profit that is why it's known as instrumental view okay this is very much similar to that carol's model that we covered economic right you are ethical because for profit if you are not unethical it will affect your profit same and this view of stakeholder it is you are not taking into picture any moral obligation that you feel there is no ob moral obligation you have towards the society you don't you are just taking the stake you are viewing stakeholders as a mean of a way of getting a profit that's it now coming to the second that is normative view second way that you are motivated is normative view opposite to instrumental normative means you have a consciousness moral consciousness that you have a moral duty towards the society that means whatever you do have to be good for the society have to be good for all the stakeholders that's what is your concern is okay so here you think what is right overall what is right not just what is right for the company to achieve your profit you see it's totally opposite now what is the impact the last part what is the impact of the stakeholders on the corporate governance okay there are four types of accounting okay one is ethical accounting ethical accounting focuses on management systems and code of practice this is at individual level okay how the company audits and complies with this okay ethical accounting second environmental auditing accounting environmental accounting means what is the organization's impact on the environment third social accounting social accounting is more broad than environmental and ethical okay here it includes things like employee conditions health and safety equal opportunity human right charity work and fourth is sustainability accounting this is a grand title remember okay so here it incorporates the triple bottom line okay with triple bottom line and it take care about the environment also in addition to that what are the triple bottom line profit or you can say the three p's profit planet and people profit is economic okay planet environment and people right so profit planet and people the three is triple bottom line that is sustainability accounting now these are the following factors that are key to ensure effective social accounting how do you ensure that there is a social effective uh, social accounting is effective these are the sum of the following factors inclusivity what does it mean that means you it's a two way communication okay not just that stakeholder communicates with you and you do not communicate back or they are you communicate with them they do not communicate with you no it's a two way communication both of the stakeholders and you the organization has to communicate with each other okay it's not just that you keep on reporting stakeholders keep on reporting no two way if they report give it back so include inclusivity second comparability okay you have to be able to compare you have to have a benchmark it could be with the previous year or it could be with the industry standard okay that will show you how the work that is being carried out whether it's good whether it's improving or not completeness when you're including something include both the negative and the positive areas of your activity not just the positive evaluation and continuous improvement you you are you have to be committed to learn from your past mistake 
and change not stuck to one and not just follow the rigid practice which might not be suitable for uh, today management policy system how do you consolidate the policies into the real life system and disclosure when you you need to disclosure you need to clearly disclose how you are meeting the stakeholders needs for example if it's from the bank you are taking a loan from the bank the finance the providers of finance how are you meeting their needs if it's a shareholder how are you meeting their needs if it's a customer how are you you need to clearly disclose them and external verification the ones who is verifying the auditor also needs to be verified how are they being independent what are you doing to keep them independent all these things needs to be there if these things are there then your social accounting is effective otherwise it's ineffective okay corporate citizenship have you heard of this term i don't think so most of you might be unaware of this term or most of you might have heard but not very sure because it's very easy for you to get confused corporate social responsibility corporate citizenship there are so many things with corporate the word corporate corporate citizenship means okay it is something beyond just complying with the rules or the obligations or that you have to comply something beyond that above it okay that means okay you you are taking care of the rights of the stakeholders also you are accepting the responsibility that you as a company have some responsibility towards the society okay you encourage a positive impact on the stakeholder you feel it's your responsibility okay not just because the law says not just because you have to comply okay so that is known as corporate citizenship and how do you achieve this corporate citizenship status interact interact more and more with the environment with the customer okay again corporate citizenship this is also linked to the concept of corporate accountability that's why i've told you in the beginning this word corporate is very uh, frequently used this term the old thing is the word before and after corporate is changed like here corporate citizenship and corporate accountability it's linked to that concept corporate accountability means what whether the organization is answerable for their action, uh, for their actions okay beyond its relationship with the shareholder not because it has relationship with the shareholder that's why they are answerable not because they are just the agent of the shareholder that's why they are answerable not beyond that they are answerable they are accountable or they feel they are they have to answer if one of the stakeholders is getting affected so that is corporate accountability okay now why why there is so much of demand from the corporations only to be more accountable or they are taken as a valid member of the society why two main things are there because it is from two main sources there are two main reasons for it why cooperation is so important why they are considered very accountable just not only to the shareholder but to the other stakeholders also number one government failure number two corporate power because they have the power to shape the life of an individual and corporate government failure let us now go in depth into government failure and corporate governance government failure why what is government failure see in the modern society now what is what happens is abundance of products and services are there so many choices are there that individual actually get uh, it's very hard for you to choose not like earlier days where products services are very limited you don't have any choice you have to go by it now it's not like that very broad right many choices are there okay so because of that in order to cope up with this rapid changes it's a risk right it's a risk it's very risk rapidly things are changing that in order in order to deal with that is government is failing government is failing because it's not just one type of risk it's ma- there are many type of risk that leads to a major type a bigger type of risk so government is failing to deal with that risk okay sometimes why reasons could be many maybe sometimes the risks are beyond the control of the single government cannot control that type of risk second the electoral impact the political will third sometimes they the government failure is a part of a problem 
not because it is some risk or something that is only a problem or it is simply too difficult to change lifestyles sometimes or sometimes the sub political activism like greenpeace okay these are environmental groups so they might not let the government to take a decision on their own right they might have an impact on the government policy so again government fails corporate power see cooperation can shape lives in many ways that's why corporate power okay number 1 they can liberate right if market are deregulating right lots of markets are now becoming from national from the public to private right so they are liberalizing okay it increases market power remember market power is increased because when markets are deregulated market powers are increased but the government's ability to intervene reduces because it is going from the government sector to the private sector now okay second privatization of many previous state monopolies means greater power is going to the hands of the government to the corporate hand corporate hand will have a greater power now to to act as a corporate citizen because it is more and more industry sectors are privatized now very few are now still under monopolies right state monopolies and when countries struggle with unemployment remember still it is the big organizations that are looked upon in terms of where they have to locate to set up a factory or in order to support the society it is most of the time the corporation the big corporations more than the government okay that the pressure on the low wage economists to maintain low wages is vast so again here corporate power is coming into the picture why because if countries where wages are low corporate power will be moving there right so that company that country they have to maintain their low wages in order to attract the mnss so here who is having the power who is shaping that it is a corporate power who is having that impact who is having that effect he, he can shape how he wants to complex cross cross border legal agreement is there so many legal agreements and because now businesses are done cross border and it's very complex so in order to avoid it corporations are encouraged to self regulate you have to regulate self regulate that's why they need to be very accountable because their impact is very huge corporate power as you can see around those five points now scoop of what is the scope of their corporate citizenship that means how much can they be uh, taken as a corporate citizen there are three views to that cc cc means corporate citizenship okay don't write cc in your exam by the way there are three views to that one is the limited view okay this is the philanthropic view limited view means you just okay the scope is very limited in this case okay you just give charitable donations that's it to the local community wherever you are operating you just give them some charitable donations wherever your organization operates that's it it's just philanthropic view that's it for the philanthropic purpose you are giving charity that's it only this much second view above it is known as equivalent view this is equivalent to csr okay corporate social responsibility that means you are meeting the four things four responsibilities from the carols model we have covered economic legal ethical and discretionary that means philanthropic okay and finally the last one it is known as the extended view this is very appropriate view when it comes to the corporate citizenship this extended view both from the point of individual as well as corporate okay they both have their own rights and responsibilities rights such as right to uh, right for the freedom of speech right to own their own property and responsibilities to uphold the civil libert uh, liberties okay where governments are failing to act in their duty okay there organizations come forward and help 
where Garmin is failing to act in their duty. So that is the extended view, this three views. This is also very important from the point of exam view, this three view. You need to go through this. So that's it. We have covered. Now, before I summarize, let us do two test your understanding. Test understanding one and two. Test your understanding one. In this, you were supposed to identify five social responsibilities of this company. So, J.V. Limited manufacture cleaning chemicals at its factory in a small town in a lake district. So, it's a chemical company, okay, and it is near a small town in the lake district. It employs 300 people and is the largest employer within a 20 mile radius. The factory is located on the side of a lake at the end of a single track road, okay. Now, the five social responsibilities that you need to identify needs to be specific to this chemical industry right or factory for chemical that is located near the town so you have to be very specific when you are giving the five social responsibilities not general answers let's see what are those five number one not polluting so pollution is number one not pollute in the lake with the waste chemicals because obviously when you are located a factory is located near a lake means there are high chances that that lake will be destroyed by the chemicals so your social responsibility is not to pollute second make sure employees use adequate protection when working with the chemicals okay now this protection is not relevant for all the industries when you are in a service industry it is not so much required but when you are in a manufacturing industry with factories located near a lake water or an industry where manufacturing stuff is done this thing is very important that employees needs to be given the protection right third complying with legislation regarding the use of dangerous chemicals okay because you are in a chemical industry you have to comply with the rules fourth minimize the impact of traffic on local roads because the road is a one-way road so you have to minimize the impact on the traffic these are social responsibilities and the fifth one is visual minimize the visual impact of the factory on the area because due to the building of the factory it might have impacted on your uh, natural environment the natural beauty that was there before the factory so try to minimize that when factory is there so this are some this thing now whenever five points they have clearly mentioned you that five points you need to give five points only not four not six okay and they told identify so no need to explain don't waste time when identification is there it's always in a bullet point like this one line is enough okay so that's it now let us go to test your understanding too In test your understanding too, the requirement is you need to identify the stakeholder groups that will be affected by the decision of the LKJ company. Okay, in this company, what are they doing? They are trying to change the electricity suppliers. Okay, how can this have unity evaluate? How can this have an impact on the decision on the group of that decision, whether to change is good or bad? Evaluate means pros and cons of changing. Then you need to discuss the actions that the board will take with respect to each stakeholder group. With each stakeholder group, if there are three stakeholder groups, you need to give three actions for each stakeholder groups. So there are two requirements if you can see. One is identify the stakeholder group. Second, discuss the actions. Okay. Now let us read the case study. So the LKG company is a distributor of electricity. We know that through the requirement that it is a Electricity supply means it's a distributor of electricity. It's into electricity company. Okay. In a large country. In effect, they purchase electricity from companies making electricity and then distribute this to a network of cables to companies and private individuals through the company, country. Electricity is generated from a variety of sources like burning coal and natural gas and nuclear power and a small amount of renewable resources such as wind and wave power. So the first part is not so important for the answers. There is just an intro to what electricity company it is operating and how they get the sources of energy, electricity. That's it. Next para, LKJ shares are owned by three other companies. So you need to when you are reading the requirement, uh, the case study. Remember what is your requirement? Is to identify the stakeholder group. So you need to identify the stakeholder group. Okay, there are three other companies. So their shares are owned by three other companies. That means. Which type of shareholder is it? It's an institutional shareholder. Institutional shareholder. I'm sorry, my handwriting might not be very uh, clear, but 
the main ideas i'm doing an annotation this is called annoting as soon as i read a line i write next to it my keywords my important things so that i don't forget i don't have to revisit again and read it okay the moment i say this para i know is about institution shareholders which i can use for my answers later on so they take an active interest see whenever they take about requirements like this identify the stakeholder groups what actions they need to take they are referring to which think which they are referring to a model that is mandelow's model in short you have to make use of this uh, model or matrix because through without this matrix understanding of this model that we just went through you will not understand how to how you have to uh, deal with the stakeholder particular stakeholder groups so that model will be using in our answer how we are going to use it will i will show you now in the profitability okay so they take an active interest that means they have an interest so out of the two things you need one is power one is interest for the mandelow's matrix we know about the interest with about power let's see whether they have given or not so there are three other electricity distribution companies in the country they operate in the board of they are currently considering the proposal to purchase electricity from another country currently okay they are having it from their own country maybe right now they are considering it to purchase from another country okay so this source of supply is quoted as being cheaper that means they believe that if they take it from another company it will be cheaper for them to take it rather than their home country so earlier they were doing it in their home country now they want to purchase it from outside their home country because it reduces cost it will be cheaper although the electricity is generated by burning coal we know that this is not it's a non renewable resource and it's not a sustainable right something not good for the environment okay if this supply is taken they will be stop purchasing electricity from an old nuclear power station and some of the expensive wind power plants so the clean earth environmental group this is another stakeholder the pressure group they have learned of the proposal and is currently participating participating in a media campaign in attempt to block the change so what are they doing they are trying to change they are saying no don't purchase it from outside which is cheaper they against it which can lead to bad publicity the board the manager and the employee they are indifferent that means for them whether you change or not it's okay although they believe that if they change the source of supply it will be price advantage for price advantage over their competitor that means they will be beneficial right they will get the benefit of a low cost low price over their competitors effectively guaranteeing their jobs for the next few years so if they have a price advantage over their competitor means what their jobs will be guaranteed in the few years right the employees and all so this is another set of stakeholders so we have identified three groups of stakeholders one is institutional investor the other one is the and clean earth environmental group the other one is both manager and employees they come together in a one group okay about this three only we need to talk maybe you must have identified other stakeholders but it's not possible because to identify another type of stakeholder which is not in the list for example customer supplier you need to you need facts about it from the case study nothing has been mentioned other than this three so you cannot write you are not in a position to write about other stakeholders okay this is the very same nature that you need to follow in sbl also something which is not there in the case study don't innovate and put don't study don't just give from the knowledge that you have studied you have studied about different types of stakeholders customer supplier competitor trade unions nothing to be mentioned about trade unions or customers or anything here okay so let's read as i have told you so how do you show that you have identified write it in a subheading identification part and then you explain last institutional investor number 1 and then you write in paragraphs the last paragraph is the last requirement that is your actions okay this is for any uh, set of stakeholders you follow that order first requirement first last requirement last last first requirement first paragraph last requirement last paragraph in between maybe you are explaining things same for second environmental pressure group and third one is directors managers and employees lkg so one by one we can quickly go okay the nature of writing is same for this only the things are facts are changing for the three stakeholders so first one is okay what do you need to know
what do you need to know you need to know this stakeholders comes under which category out of the four from Maslow's matrix okay i will draw that matrix for you let's keep this as power this is an interest so this is low high low high okay so if both are high and high key players kp if power is high and interest is low keep them satisfied if the interest is low power is also low minimal effect me and if the interest is high but the power is low keep informed ki i'm using short forms okay you need to know out of this four it falls under which so institutional investors falls under see in the case study they told they have high interest they didn't say anything about power so default position interest is high power is low so that falls in this one keep them informed this category therefore you need to communicate with them okay so you need to keep them informed keep the stakeholder informed you see how i'm using the model i'm not even mentioning about the model i'm not saying power is this interest is on non excess this has high power this has low excess therefore keep them informed no nothing just keep the stakeholder informed this is why i wanted to show i wanted to do this question very eagerly because i wanted to show you how to use a modeling analysis without even mentioning anything about the model i'm using the model you see so be very specific and to the point okay don't waste so much of time explaining the mandelos model it's not required what is required is out of this four strategy what are you doing are you keeping them informed satisfied are they key players or no effort so keep them informed okay now so all this you can read later on okay i'm just highlighting the important points and explaining you the answer i'm not writing uh, read, uh, reading line by line okay that you also can do next link to the case study first is very general understanding how strategic investors the nature is keep them informed communicate with them they can affect the strategy all those things second paragraph is they are talking about the three investors okay in lkg okay this they are referring exactly from the case study okay but they have changed the words they are not copy pasting it i will take you through the case study here mm, you see they are owned by three other companies they have interest in the profitability that's it okay so when you are writing you are not writing the same thing so the three investors they are keen for the electricity to be purchased from the different country you see they are keen they want them to be purchased from different country because it will increase their return on their investment whenever you say someone a stakeholder you need to keep them informed or they have you need to talk about the particular interest of the stakeholder in any answer even in your sbl answer whenever a stakeholder question is asked you need to specifically what is their interest what is the benefit for them if they are taking a certain action or what is the disadvantage you have to talk about that only so here they will be happy to purchase from different country why because their return will increase that is their only concern so that you need to write in your answer last paragraph as i told you it's an action okay what they need to know you need to be you need to do a little bit of creative thinking here you cannot use your knowledge entirely nor your case study entirely because this action comes from you humans you will have variety of answers in this section everyone thinks different right but it needs to be practical your recommendations actions that you are telling the board to do whatever you are saying so he, like actions means how you are managing the stakeholder this stakeholder okay so here you can have a dialogue with them with whom with the chairman and the large institution shareholders by uh, having an agm or you can even have frequent meetings with them okay next is environmental pressure group this is the next set okay so another way to point out how to write your sbl answers i'm I, this is a, a bit too early for you but i think it's uh, quite the right time for me to point out that um, when you're writing sbl answers okay how to know which stakeholders to write i mean so many stakeholders are there how, the order see order is very simple 
you follow the order the case study is presented to you so you have been first presented with the three other companies owned by three other companies that means institutional shareholders then in the between you are presented with clean earth environmental and last board managing employee so go by that order in your answer also it's very easy in that way you will not miss out on anything because you are going in the order rather than first writing what is given last and then you are writing what is given first don't change the order that that's what i always recommend but if you change the order also it will not affect your answer or harm your answer in any way okay so environmental pressure group okay here they have high power how do you know they have because they can change the strategy of the company whenever a particular stakeholder or a group of stakeholders can change the strategy or they can do that they have the ability that means it's a power okay they are talking about influence or power it's the same thing sometimes they might not write anything about power or interest they might say influence influence means power okay it's the same thing they didn't say anything about interest but they have talked about power okay obviously high power because environment environmental pressure group is the one who have high interest normally that's the case it falls in that category having high interest but whether they have high power or low power is up to the case study that is given in this case they have high power okay because they can change the strategy of the organization okay that's why that's why you need to communicate with this group you have to explain you have to educate them regarding the actions that you are taking okay now coming to the clean earth they are they are they can influence the strategy how through media campaign through media campaign that's how they can even that's how you can say they have the power and whether they have high interest or not will assume they have high interest because see if they can change the strategy they will be having a high interest because the type of industry that that organization is into is very much linked to the environment so in that category they will be having a high interest to manipulate to to influence the organization then the energy uh, energy sector energy sector is usually uh, pressure groups are attracted they are towards that industry energy sector you will find uh, pressure groups in that sector some sectors are very prone to this pressure groups energy sector is one such because it has a huge impact on the natural resources that's why so high interest okay sometimes it's hard for you to decide that's why i'm helping you giving a hint on how to decide whether it has high interest or not sometimes everything is not given you need to use an your idea what industry it is operating in and things like that but about power we know okay because they have an influence on media so why are they giving this campaign you need to talk about it because if you don't say what is this campaign about you will not be able to explain the actions later on this campaign is to tell that don't obtain coal electricity from coal because it's more harmful to the environment that means do not purchase from outside because outside purchasing means you are taking from coal only they are also burning electricity from coal which is dangerous to the environment okay so in that case if you give you as a company lkj tells that you want to change the source of supply because it will increase your profit it's not acceptable it is not justified only profit no not justified so in this case what should you do action the board must be prepared to learn from the pressure you have to handle the pressure you totally cannot neglect them right and remember pressure groups they have responsible and knowledgeable people within the group okay it is a wrong uh, misconception that we always think that they are just people who just get along and voluntarily they just want to protect the environment without knowing anything about it no it's not like that check out on any environment group you can google it maybe greenpeace is one such example wherever it is under whatever field it is it will be having people who have knowledge about that specific field okay and they are responsible also they are very responsible so you cannot play around with them regarding rules and regulations they know everything okay so if you do not listen to such valuable advice from them you are falling into trouble you are calling trouble for yourself okay even though their uh, advice is biased okay because obviously they want to use renewable resources for the sake of the environment but they can give you ideas regarding cost efficiency that the company can use and always name the company whenever you are referring to something in your case study always 
that shows that you are linking to the case study you have a good understanding of the case study okay because as i told you they they have the knowledge they are responsible so they will be from their knowledge they'll be able to tell you how to reduce the cost now if not this to another way so you can take their advice it's a good thing next the last one directors managers employees don't write it separately together because it is given to you together so write together okay and stakeholders like customers and all avoid writing don't write nothing has been mentioned in the case study that's why even though they are also stakeholders but for this case study don't write now in this case directors have an impact on corporate governance remember directors managers employees they have a huge responsibility when it comes to corporate governance compared to other stakeholders especially directors okay so they have the responsibility to act in the best interest of the company as well as the shareholder okay so but in this sense regarding there there is no conflict no conflict for them whether they have to source from outside or not okay because lkj profits are focused to increase while there is a job security for the directors why there is just no conflict because the company's profit is also focused to increase as well as their job security for the director something has been mentioned about job security right just go through the question you will see there at the end so they are not losing their jobs even if it is being shifted to another country they are sourcing it their job is still there so job is also required you are also profit is also increasing that's why there is no conflict within this set of stakeholder group with the company okay so directors by default high power high interest okay i have not seen any case study where directors are have low power low interest or the other way around it is only high power and high interest by default okay if nothing has been mentioned like how environmental pressure group and institution investors has been mentioned having high power or uh, high interest directors default high power high interest they are the key players okay in that matrix model medlos they fall in the key player category okay because they have a huge role in corporate governance so they are the key players so their power appears to be used correctly in this case their power is being used correctly why because job is not being lost also they are taking from outside that's why now similarly the actions of directors appears to meet the requirements of managers and employees also why because their jobs are protected last the action but the environmental impact is not so good you need to concern about it because if directors are considered not to be acting ethically what happens customers may choose alternative suppliers remember that long term always think long term effect okay so this action what does it mean it might mean profit focus are incorrect and directors may need to consider alternative courses of action that means they might they cannot go with this course of action sourcing from outside okay why see because if the thing that if the source from outside profit will increase but if the source from outside is something which is considered unethical in that case customers will choose to alternative supply that means customers are you are losing customer so your profit is not increasing in fact is reducing so your profit focus that you have made based on what you have taken the decision to source from outside is incorrect that's why you need to as a director you need to consider alternative courses of action now this sentence is very important why sometimes like the other two stakeholders you have given specific advice do this do that this action communicate have a board meeting here it's not so easy so where it is not so straightforward not so easy to give a specific recommendation you are free to give this line you can even repeat this memorize it and give it and you can use this line wherever it is applicable like in this you can just simply write the uh, director uh, such 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 person may need to consider alternative courses of action that's enough more than enough you will get your marks okay so that's it for our test understanding too now let us summarize everything that we have covered so the summary of stakeholder analysis and social responsibility here we have covered the roles interests and claims of stakeholders both internal and external stakeholders under internal stakeholders we went through directors company secretary managers employees and employee representatives and external stakeholders we went through auditors regulators shareholders government and stock exchange and regarding csr we went through the 
Carol, and the definition of CSR is how organization manages the impact that they have on the operations, on the environment, and also on other stakeholder groups. Under the Carol, we studied the four responsibilities that organization takes regarding their social responsibility. Number one, economic responsibility that is regarding profit. Second, legal, they go by the law. Third, social, where the social responsibility is also known as ethical responsibilities, the same. And fourth is philanthropic, above and beyond the first three. Then under CSR, we went through stakeholder theory, which we are going to cover in detail in the next slide. Corporate citizenship, okay, it is the extended view of the corporate role. Remember the three views, limited, equivalent, and extended view that we went through regarding corporate role. So extended view is similar to CSR. And shareholder ownership, the rights and the responsibilities of them. So under stakeholder theory, this is further broken down into definition and stakeholders. So definition of stakeholder theory is stakeholder is someone who can affect or be affected by the organizations. And stakeholders, they have claims on the organizations. And the stakeholders are further divided into four. How do you classify them? How do you manage them? How are they motivated? And what is the impact on the corporate governance? Regarding the classification, they can be classified in six ways. Internal versus external, primary, secondary, active, passive, voluntary, involuntary, legitimate, and illegitimate. Stakeholder relations use the Mandel's model, the power influence, high, low, low, high, and that. And stakeholder motivations, they have two views on how they are motivated. One is instrumental view. The other one is normative view. Instrumental is regarding profit. Normative is beyond that. Okay, voluntarily they take part. Impact on the corporate governance. Okay, there is an increased need for the form of social accounting. Social accounting means they take care of uh, everything about employee, welfare of employee, health safety, things like that. Okay, and they provide this information to whom? Stakeholders. So that's it for it and thank you for watching and see you in the next video.